long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. As long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. Oh my goodness, it's Gary Jones again, mate. Oh, how, this is amazing. How the devil are you? How you can download that song because that kicks ass. You, you, you do love that song, don't you? I do. So, what, 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 I need to, I need to get it out, don't I? I need, I need a record producer or somebody like that that's, yes. that's able to, to help me. You do, um, you do, you do. So, LinkedIn, do, do some more stuff. yeah, let us know. Absolutely. So, that's what we need to be doing. Okay. So, uh, where's my lights at the back? There we go. Anyway, Gary Jones, how the devil are you? Here we I'm are, very good. fourth week in a row. Why do you keep coming on my show? Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. So, for everyone who doesn't know me, uh, my name is Gary Jones. I'm from Grow, and I help people launch podcasts. And over the last four, well, last three weeks, this is the fourth week, me and Ashley have been talking about launching his new podcast, which this this is what it's leading up to. So if you haven't already covered sections one, two, and three, which is all about creating the idea, forming that kind of bad boy to make sure it's as good as it can be and robust as it can be, to marketing, to actually putting it all together, then check out the last three parts because it's been really cool. And yeah, today is the last bit. So I'm really sad. I've really enjoyed being live every week. Yeah, you were just saying to me, you were saying to me in the green room, <laughs> we, we call it the green room, don't we? Um, so um, in the green room, you've just been saying that you want to do a bit more live. So uh, yeah, we get, yeah. So, so if anything, whether or not my podcast is a success, who cares? But Gary's going to do more live. So there you I go. Am. There you I go. Am, I'm, I'm, any I'm, ideas I'm, for guests on your show? Oh, now that's a question. <laughs> if only I could find someone. All right. Okay. If you're stuck, I know a few people. I know a few people. I'm all over LinkedIn. I know lots of people. I know lots of lovely people, actually. Um, so this is this has been amazing because we've, we're, we're doing loads of stuff. Um, I, if you're listening on the podcast, I record it live. Uh, the main benefit that I've learned from Gary is by recording it live, I have to be here on a Tuesday at 1230. So therefore, I do a show. So and and. What, what so so what you said you haven't done many lives and now you're all fired up to do it all again so what 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 is it for you gary for lives so the thing is most of the conversations that i have with people um go out pretty much as is um there's a, maybe a few little bits of editing but only tiny bits because i really do believe that a good podcast a good interview should just be two people chatting that yeah. should be what it should be um so for me it makes no difference if I'm live or on video because it's the same output. The big bit for me is the interaction when people join us and ask questions. Yes. Um, that's the big bit that I love. The accountability is great. Um, and also, to be fair, some of the guests thrive on being live compared to video. They kind of really come to life. Some people has the opposite effect, but some people love being live. But for me, yeah, it's... It is that interaction and also that accountability. The output, as I said, is the same. So from, it's just a personal kind of preference, really, for me. Cool. Okay. So we've done the podcast. We've recorded it. Mm -hmm. What do we do now? So last time we spoke about putting it up into a podcast host um, that shares it to all the platforms. So we're pretty much now ready to press the kind of launch button and to tell our audience, to all of our people in our community, that the podcast is live. So we're at that point. Now, at, up until that point, you should have already been talking about it on your social media. Your community should be aware that you are launching a new podcast. And as I said before, with you launching your new podcast in the back of four episodes, talking about launching your podcasts, you've taken your audience, your community on that journey. Yep. So they should kind of be expecting a change of format a change of name and all of that kind of good stuff but some people leave it right to the last minute and okay. think once they've pressed the launch button that's when they should start marketing it but that will be the same principle as let's say a marvel or dc film literally doing no promo leading up to the film and then literally the 200 
million kind of pound blockbuster launching at the cinema with no promo whatsoever. Guess okay. what? Yeah, nobody's nobody will know what it's about. Nobody will be prepared for it, be excited about it. It will be a drop. But people yeah. use that analogy for their podcasts. So this is what we're talking about today is literally the marketing now of the podcast and also potentially what's next. What's next for your podcast after you've launched it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so getting more guests on and things like that. So I, I, talk, I talked about it um, in my newsletter this week. So I've already had a couple of people email me, say, can I be on your show? Mm -hmm. uh, already got a few guests already booked in um so so yeah so it's it's taking that to the next level um so there was a there was a question that i had for you i am currently using spotify for podcasters which used to be anchor mm -hmm. um and i set that up as an anchor account i cannot add any more podcasts to that so at the moment that is solely for this podcast yeah okay now I may or may not be doing podcasts for other people. So I want something where I can do their podcast as well. So it goes, so they have their own channel. Mm -hmm. um, and I want this to be a totally standalone podcast, don't I? Yeah, yeah. I think in terms of your strategy, if it fits into your strategy as a standalone, then yes, you do, definitely. Um, and I think when it comes to managing other people's podcasts or being the host for other people's podcasts, it's easy if it's on the same platform. Again, it's all about making it easy in terms of spending the least amount of time or energy kind of on the process part of the podcast so you can actually do the good stuff of interviewing people and talking to people and building those connections with the community and the audience. So, yeah, the behind the scenes, you want to make it as simple as possible. And a place like Spotify for, for podcasts, it's great. Um, I personally don't use it because it has got limitations. And one of those limitations, funny enough, well, yeah, one of those limitations is that you can't have that. Also, you can't have as many stats, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's a good platform to start off with, but there are limitations. But places like Podbean, um, Buzzsprout, allow multiple podcasts to be on there, as well as audio booms under the same login details. However, yeah, if you are l managing other people's podcasts in terms of being the host and uploading and all that kind of stuff, you might want to consider setting these up under a separate email but on the same platform. So they set up the actual um, place, the actual kind of the account itself, even if it's just you them sending you the, using the email and the password, that kind of stuff. So they've got full access to it. So if anything, so if they changed or they moved away from you, they've still got full access to that account. Oh, that's a great just idea. A little, just a little kind of tip. Yeah, okay. So so they have their own account and but then yeah, whatever happens, they've still always got it. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, it more just more means more it's easier. More and more transparency. Exactly. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter about if you see you personally still got access to it. Um, but it means that you, effectively you can just log in and upload the stuff and they've still got all the back end stuff as well. Also it gives them more accountability as well. If it's okay. under your details and there, they're more like they could at some point go, do you know what? It's not working. But if it's all under their name, they're less likely to. Okay. So marketing then. Let's let's mm. dig dig a little more in that. And uh so so we, we get we get Pavel coming on and listening every every week. So hi Pavel. Um so he he's he should be shouting out for us. So that's that's one stream of marketing. So existing existing people that are enjoying our stuff. Where else should we be marketing, Gary? Well, the thing is you've got couple of different levels in terms of marketing and i think about it in kind of circles so in your inner circle these are your people who you talk to day in day out um these are your community on facebook on linkedin on instagram wherever your online communities are could be the people who you meet and have a chat with at networking meetings if you're doing face to face it could be your newsletter if you send that out every week but these are people you're in regular contact with now to get to those kind of people they should already know at this point that you're launching a new podcast or you're changing your podcast because you would have put it, as you said, in your newsletter. You put it on your socials. You've done these kind of bits. So for them, now it's about giving them the tools to share it rather than just to know about it. So you want them to listen to it. You want them to ideally review and make give a comment so it helps with the algorithm to know that so the platforms think, actually, yeah, People who interact with this, we might share it to a few more people, but also you want them to share it with them. So you want to tell them at this stage when it's going to be launched. You want to tell them where it's going to be. So it's going to be on YouTube, Spotify, 
um, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, those kind of places. If you've already set up the podcast and you've already got those links and you've already got a profile because you've uploaded the trailer and you've set up those links, then share with them the link to say to, say to them at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning on this day. It's going to go live. We're going big. Can you help me share it? And get them on board because, again, you want to take them through that journey. So that's your inner circle. And that then turns them from listeners, from just regular people to listeners, but also into supporters who are going to really shout about it. You've then got the next circle out, which is their kind of people and your extended network. So these could be the Facebook groups that you don't normally go into or your LinkedIn groups that you tend to pop into once or a while. These could be people who you meet once a month or once every six months at different places. It might be worth sending them a message and saying, hey, launching this, it might be, you know, it would be great to, for you to be in a guest. Um, just so they're kind of aware and it's on their radar. But also this is where you putting it on maybe places like LinkedIn when it comes to articles and getting it shared from there, um, making sure you've done a kind of a couple of kind of videos about it and placed it on different places so they can share it as well. You know, it's about getting the message out to those people. Um, the press release, you might want to do a press release and get it out to those people as well. But equally, the press release and the wider audience will come after that. And that's where that's where the press release to local papers or local kind of press contacts that might work. If it is a proper niche podcast in a particular or a, a local podcast for or a particular area. But get it out there, get it out there. But you want it to be on launch day. You want it to be on socials. You want it to be on your newsletter. You want it to be on your website. You want it to be in the press. You want it to be everywhere. You want it to, you want that spider web of connections, that spider web of, if you imagine you've got spider web and each point on that spider web is your podcast. You just want to be, want to be spreading, spreading, spreading. But then you also want people to be interacting with it. So yeah. at the point of launch, there's no such thing as overkill. You shout about it and you get other people to shout about it at the same time. Brilliant, brilliant. So what I need to do is wear a Superman costume or something like that so that I can do all the marketing like like DC do. Um, or just wear your yellow T-shirt. and just wear my yellow T-shirt, yeah, absolutely. Be as many places as possible. Also, if you are in face-to-face -face places like your LinkedIn kind of workshops and networking events and all that kind of stuff, you talk about it then. If you can stand up and talk about it in your 60 seconds or 40 seconds, tell people about it, do it. Yeah, and that, that's that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, yeah, I was there the other week. Why didn't I mention I've got a new podcast coming out? Oh, silly me, silly me. Uh, do you know what? How many, how many chats have you had to people who have said that in the past to you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, as a LinkedIn specialist, um, I, I get to speak to all kinds of people. And, yeah, we're not sharing enough stuff, are we? We think we are, but we, we really need to share a little bit more. So my post tomorrow is going to be all about what we talked about today. Yeah. I'm telling everybody yeah. all about my new podcast that's coming very yeah. soon. And you'll need to share the graphics that you've kind of created about that, you know, tell people and again, take them on that journey. That's what that's what everybody needs to do. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so um, I'm going to start telling everybody else about it. So what else are we doing to make sure that people hear my podcast so as well as hearing people you want people to keep listening to your podcast yeah after a while so it's not just a good enough for them to listen to it once you want them to become you want your podcast to become part of their regular listening habit and typically people listen between six or eight podcasts on a rotation now some might fit in some might fit out but there's normally six to eight that people tend to listen to on a regular basis or having their kind of spotify or apple podcast library that gets updated yeah that makes sense so you want your podcast to be in those bits okay. um so you want to as well as telling people about it you want it to be enriching that community inside it now you can do that by setting up a private community you can set it up um, and that could be a private linkedin group facebook group whatever it is talking about that particular thing you could set up a patreon which then allows people to get maybe exclusive content from you it could be questions and answer sessions they could give people give you um ideas about what content they want to kind of share hell you know your new show is all about answering people's problems on linkedin they could literally send you questions and you could do a solo episode of talking about their problems that they've had yep. good, idea. You know, good idea it's all about getting them involved with your podcast so when they listen to the podcast 
they might hear their name or they might hear someone else's question that they've seen on that group. It's about linking the two together. And the real good podcasts have got a real good community behind them. Now, that might have been what they had before or they might have made that community as time goes on. The fact is that they're engaging with their community both in the podcast and outside of the podcast as well. That's a great idea. So I have a uh, LinkedIn page already uh, with people that have been on my workshop before. So these are people that know me, uh, like me and trust me, paid me money, and they know a little bit about LinkedIn as well. So uh, it's time to re-energize that and make that the podcast page, isn't it? That's it. And how, yeah. as a LinkedIn person yourself, how would you energize that LinkedIn page? Start putting loads of posts in there, give it some new graphics, um, and yeah, start doing some more stuff in there. So yeah, absolutely. I, I know a little bit about creating content, so that would be easy. Um, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? And then sort of like dropping in who my guests are going to be in the next few weeks, so people start talking about it, and then people start saying, "Hey, why don't we have this as a guest or, or, or stuff like that?" And um, I don't want to yeah. be on. I don't want to be on your show, but could you do a little bit that explains about this? So uh, this yeah, it. absolutely. You regardless of their kind of level of confidence when it comes to podcasting you're allowing your audience to kind of get their get their questions answered yeah and in terms of your guess about what's coming up let's go back to the marvel dc film analogy you kind of know who the characters are before the film gets released yeah so yeah. therefore actually when it comes to guests on your podcast tell people about it tell them that you've got this person coming up in this week's um episode like you do already but maybe in a couple of months a couple of kind of the next four guests are these and talk about these topics we don't want to leave all the marketing to when the, the episode's out that should just be the final push over the line this is where you listen to it they should already know a bit about it no perfect okay so we've got a community we've done loads of marketing what else do we need to do gary so what we could do at this stage as well is think about what's going to be happening next for the podcast um and what I mean by this is that you've got a podcast, you've got this gorgeous bit of content, you've got a community which is really engaged with you, but what else can you do with that content? What else can you do with that community? And this is going to depend, this is going to be different to pretty much every podcast because their community, their audience could be slightly different. Um, but with someone like yourself who is good at interviewing people, you know, you take, you already do lives. So you've already got that kind of level. Do you go one step further and do you potentially do a face-to-face -face live event where you actually talk to people and interview them on stage somewhere? Whoa, really? Would you do that? Could you elevate it to that level? Could you turn some of these um, some of these interviews into stories and publish a book with a collection of them? You've already got one kick-ass book, which you can see in the background for the people watching on YouTube. You know, could you actually do one around the podcast? Could you do a collection of how? The 20 minutes behind the profile or 15 minutes behind the profile you know 15 people 15 minutes behind the profile you know you, you could see it kind of working and you've got a smiley face to tell me that actually this isn't the first time you've heard this or had this idea am i right or am i wrong um yeah you're right you're right <laughs> and, and, and this is the thing is is i've got 200 over 200 episodes where i've spoken to people uh, and they're just up there in the ether doing nothing so i could be getting a va to go in Get it all transcribed, pick out the best bits and write a book. There you go. That's it. Wow. That's it. So, e so also, easy to write a book, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's so easy to say you're going to write a book. It's yeah, absolutely. It's a thousand times harder. Um, and this is coming from a person who hasn't got a book. You know how hard it is to write a book and get a book published. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, if you think about um, accessibility as well, having a book is great for people who don't want to listen, who don't want to watch, who can't listen, who can't watch. So actually, it just gives your your podcast another dimension for the people who actually just want to sit down with a book and just relax. Yeah, really. interesting. But, you know, you just want to kind of think about how all of this fits into the plan. So almost you're making a plan over the next six months. Where is my podcast now? So at this point for you, it's just about to launch. Six months down the line, I'll have 26 or 30, 26, let's say 26 episodes. So one a week, you're doing them live. So you've got that accountability. So let's say 26. What am I going to be doing at that point? Do I want to push it and do a live show? Do I want to carry on as I'm doing? Do I want to say, actually, the community, let's really push on and let's grow our numbers? 
you know, your community might, you might ask a question in the community and that might throw a completely different idea out because they might be thinking, actually, we would love actually to do this. But make a plan. And then after you made the plan for six months, think about what you're going to be doing between six months to a year. And then grand plan, where do you want to go? Do you see yourself being on stage in kind of theatres? Vegas. Vegas, that's it. Talking to people, interviewing people. Hell, you're doing it live. How about doing an actual TV show? You know, how far do you want to take it? Because I'm not saying you want to go to that stage, but it kind of gives you a roadmap or at least a kind of a plan to say, well, actually, I'm just quite happy having this podcast. I might be doing it live. That's all good. But it's in your plan, and you can kind of work towards it. Yeah, and and, and that's the thing, isn't it? You you um, Look, I just started this podcast because I just thought I'd like a podcast. And we, we have discussed that uh, I wanted to be a Radio 1 DJ when I was at school. And, um, yeah, who's to, who's, who's to say that you never know? I might be on national radio. Um, yeah. who knows who knows and that and that's the thing and, and and the thing is we can absolutely do anything today S- everything is so much easier um there's a guy i listened to ali abdal i don't know if you know of him um I, interesting character he um started blogging oh years and years ago or vlogging and he is a doctor uh, okay. he went he did um however many years medical degree and while he was doing the medical degree, he was helping people to um, pass their exams. And then when he passed all the exams and, and what to do when you first start. And he was doing all these videos. Uh, and now he's um, doing um, productivity. He's just written a book. But he's got an amazing community and a couple of million followers on YouTube. So seriously monetizing it all. But it yeah. all started from absolutely nothing. And now he's getting invited and he's getting guests as well, as well you know, like Stephen Bartlett. Um, and, and people like that he's getting to speak to. So really, really interesting chap, but all from being a medical student. And, and I guess as a medical student, he probably thought, oh, I'll just do this as a side hustle. Nowhere in his wildest dreams did he ever think he'd become Ali Abdul. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? And, and you, you know, anybody can have a go now. And it's just seeing what that is and, and making it happen. So, yeah, you've just yeah. Um, ignited something in me there. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right well the thing is you, you kind of listen to other people's stories like one guy who i follow quite closely is jay shetty um yes. who's into mindfulness he's a great great guy um and he got told he had an idea for a tv show all around mindfulness years and years ago and got told by exec by exec by exec by different companies for sponsorship no it's not going to work the reach isn't there um so he went to a workshop and this was in the meditation on the car map for full disclosure. So it's out there in the public. And he got, went to a TV kind of workshop, how to get on TV um, workshop, and got told the easiest way to get on TV is to start a YouTube channel. That's the easiest way to get on TV because you're practicing your craft. You're making sure that you're kind of getting noticed. You can share it with your audience. You can build that community around you to start off with. And all the way through that you can then still be marketing to tv execs to kind of pinpoint them and as your community grows as your audience grow as your confidence grow as your skills grow guess what they're going to start to take notice if you've got the consistency behind you it's exactly the same with podcasting exactly the same with blogging with writing the book and that kind of stuff it's the same principle it's just a different medium yeah absolutely and uh before before we went live i i shared something that i'm not allowed to share anyway but it's those sorts of things that can happen um, and it's all about consistency. Oh, Gary, that is absolutely fantastic. Now, what have we missed? That's four weeks of getting started on a podcast, launching a podcast. So, so let's let's just. What else have I missed? What have we forgotten? What the only other thing we need to speak up? about, which you covered, you asked right at the start, was about monetization um, and about how to make money from your podcast. Um, because a lot of people ask me this, and based on the last four weeks we haven't mentioned it because it is not the start it shouldn't be the starting point for your podcast to make money it should be about giving value and enriching that audience and community that's what it's in my mind that's how it should be but there are some stuff you can do to make some money from your podcast um so if you've say for the people who have got podcasts out there um maybe not you actually because you're at a different level to other people because you have got those backgrounds but if you've got books mention it in your podcast 
you know, you can get sponsors potentially, um, which you could record a small segment at the start, middle, or the end. If you're doing it live, hang, hang on just a sec. Hang on just a sec. This show is brought to you by Grow. There you go. <laughs> Is that, is that yeah, sort of thing? You want, well, yeah, something like that. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And it makes it's more powerful the host saying it rather than the actual company itself saying it as well, because the audience knows already knows the host and already is familiar and trusts the host. So it's coming from a trusted place if you say it rather than the co company saying it. So you could do that. Um, if you've got any events coming up, you can shout about it in events as well. Um, and also on your social posts, on your website and that kind of stuff, the graphics you make, you can put little logos on it if you wanted to. So they're just some really quick ideas for anybody starting a podcast. How can they, about how they can kind of start integrating their products and their services, their events, their books, their products into, you know, their podcast as well. And if someone's doing it live, Hell, when it goes to the editing process, you can just insert a little bit in uh, or in the middle or at the start or at the end. It's the same thing. Um, and even if you're live, you can always play a quick video after the countdown section of the sponsor's message if you wanted to. It's yeah, up to you. Yeah. No, perfect. Perfect. Um, great question from Pavel. I love that. Um, I just opened up my podcast um, on, on my phone. Um, very interested. I would just never expect a person can regularly listen to eight podcasts. And Pavlov, they might not regularly listen to eight podcasts, but they've got eight podcasts that they kind of tune into. That's the that's the big thing in it. So they might dip in and out of it. They might listen to two of one, right. and then you're going to hold you're going to hold your fingers up. Then ready? So bookkeepers podcast, Espresso Plus, Sales Social, Problem Solvers. You write you counting all these, yeah? The Vivid Podcast, Business Business Advisor Podcast, Diary of a CEO, High Performance Disruptors, Accounting Influencers, uh, Linked Informed, um, the Fifty Minutes. I listen to my podcast, both of them. Of course you do. Of course you do. Yeah. Uh, Social Media Marketing, Deep Dive, um, LinkedIn with Louise, Ambitious Lifestyle, Youpreneur, Case. Um, who needs instructions? So those are the podcasts that I listen to regularly. And some of the others, as I'm scrolling down and going, oh, I've not heard from them in a while. So these are people that have started a podcast and not finished. So how many have I got? There's nine. Nine I listen to regularly. No, it's 19. Ni 19? 19. <laughs> one, nine. one nine. Wow. Am I mad? Yeah. No, because as long as you have time to listen to them and podcasts is enriching your life, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. You're, you're getting all these multiple sources of information about different topics. That's not bad. It's the same as watching nine to having watching nineteen different friends on TV. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, 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 I would I would say I would do mine, but I include all of my my clients' ones on there purely because it helps me share their content afterwards and share, share the links with them. So if I yeah. went through my list, it would be a crazy out. But yeah. I'm regularly, I probably listen to about nine yeah. a week, which is different, which is a, as well as the podcast that I'm editing and producing. Yeah, fantastic. I hope that answers your question, Pavel. I hope you listen to a podcast res regularly, Pavel. Um, so that's it. Gary, thank you so much. Um, I've been listening to the last four weeks and I keep hearing this Gary Jones. Come on, Gary. How can you help me if I come to you? What are you going to do for me? It's your chance to let me know exactly what you do and how you can help me. Best show. So for anyone who's looking to launch a podcast or actually just get involved at podcasting, whatever level you are, then connect with me on LinkedIn or check me out on growradio.uk. I'm in pretty much every social media platform, apart from TikTok. I don't do TikTok at the moment. Um, but, yeah, connect with me. Have a chat with me. I'm happy to have a free 20-minute chat with anyone to get them started. And these episodes are 30 minutes long. 20 minutes is quite a long time to ask me questions and to get loads of answers from me. If you are looking to start your own podcast, I have got a podcast launch guide, which is available, where you can either do it yourself or you can be coached by myself um during during the actual launch guide and that will take you from complete beginner to launching your podcast so if you do want that i can send you the link as well but it all starts with a little conversation so let's connect absolutely and and yeah what a great connection and uh, what a great conversation gary you've been an absolute star right here we go here we go my guest next week on my brand new podcast which is not going to be on linkedin pavel 
I am going on YouTube. So next week I have got, um, where is it? I'm going to find the brand button. Uh, I'm still working on the graphics, but there we go. I've got John Asperian, the relentlessly helpful LinkedIn nerd, is coming on to talk to me about LinkedIn. And uh, I've got some great guests coming up as well. So that's uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Gary. You've been an absolute superstar. Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in and Pavel for all of your comments uh, and discussions. And um, goodbye, LinkedIn. But I am going to be on LinkedIn on Wednesdays, but not on Tuesdays anymore. Cheerio. <laughs> Thank you. You get out what you 